Hello and welcome back to the Eagle Griffin Games Vlog, and this week we'll interview the dynamic duo design team Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle, followed by a sneak peek at an upcoming Vital Asserta game where you are scientists working with the inventor of the weather machine. And in the Eggs from the Vault segment, we'll give you a quick overview of a fast playing card game where you're trying to outwit your opponents and collect as many good dragon eggs as possible while avoiding the exploding eggs. And then we'll finish it off with a game giveaway. But first, let's update you on some past and upcoming Kickstarters. The Faux Diamonds and Baseball Highlights the Dice Game Pledge Manager will wrap up at the end of the month. If you wish to late pledge for either game, now's your chance and that link is below. The campaign for the upcoming On Mars expansion, On Mars Alien Invasion, will launch July 15th on Kickstarter. This expansion adds four new ways to play On Mars, including a one versus many mode, two cooperative modes, and a solo or group cooperative mode. Railways of Sweden, Railways of Australia, and Rail Barons of the World, three new expansions for the Railway of the World series, will launch on Kickstarter May 13th and will run until May 28th. A launch event for this campaign has been posted on Facebook. Join at the link below to receive more sneak peeks into these new expansions as well as more details on the campaign. Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle have co-designed many games together. These include Eagle Griffin titles such as Fleet, Fleet Wharfside, Fleet the Dice Game, Eggs and Empires, Floating Market, and Morocco. They've also designed other popular titles like Wasteland Express Delivery Service, Stellar, and the recent Three Sisters Roll and Write. So let's welcome in Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle. So it all started uh, almost 10 years ago, over 10 years, 12 years ago now almost, because we're old, at work. Uh, ben and I have known each other for literally 30 years now at this point. And he came up to me at work and said, hey, uh, we're going to design a game. And I said, okay. And that game was Fleet. Yeah, so the story for me is when I you know, was getting into Euro games, we've been playing these you know, modern games for five years or so. And I thought I wanted to start designing one. It made sense to bring in Matt because he's my arch nemesis. At game night, he's a fantastic player, and I hate losing to him. Probably more than I like winning, I hate losing to Matt. That's fair. And he wins a lot. So he was my arch nemesis, plus we've known each other 20, 30 years. And I thought, if I'm going to design a game with somebody, I'm going to go with the best gamer I know and one of my best friends. So I'm like, I didn't ask him. I just said, hey, we're designing a game together now. It's true. And he's like, sweet, show me what you got. Yep. And as we tell the story, we went to Taco Bell that day. Not the last time we've been to Taco Bell. <laughs> Actually, we've designed quite a bit of our Eagle Griffin games we at so Taco Bell. There was a Bell. lot of Taco Bell work back it then. It wasn't good to our waistlines, but, you know, it was, it was a good process. Yeah. And uh, that, that was our start. That's how we got there, yeah? yeah. 100%. We just start, we started designing at work. So we would wait till lunchtime. We would head off to lunch, you know, and we would do some design work. At some point during that process, we had a couple of buddies who we were playing games with once a week on like Thursdays or whatever, for example. And that group of guys said, "Hey, can we play Fleet?" So we started showing them Fleet. They, they would basically help us test and iterate things at lunchtime. At that time, it was just called the card game. It was though. just it, it, it literally just a card game. We it would was in a con conference room. continents was yes. the original. Not Instead of like lobster, you would have some Africa, some some settlements in Asia right. type of yep. thing. You're kind of the old settling cities and continents. Yep. It was just a very generic way to get just the game just going. to work, hundred yeah. percent. So we were running it in a conference room at work every now and then at lunchtime, and one of our buddies goes, "What about Deadly's Catch?" And we're like, "Yeah, okay, sure, that makes sense." And we kind of talked through it because we'd had this idea where you're settling cities, like Ben said, right? And you know, this is yeah. And the fish Europe. was initially just population right. growth, but yep. actually, it works a lot better catching fish. It does. It does. It was actually a pretty seamless transition. And then we got to do. It took us God two and a half years yeah, to design fleet. Long time. So we had like a whole year after the theme <laughs> to really make sure that it all made sense, which was awesome. So yeah, like pro processing vessel didn't exist until after right. the change yep. to the deadliest yep. catch, you know, fleet type yep. thing. And then Ridback Bay kind of came out because we just like putting our names together and sneaking it's it true. into everything, <laughs> and it kind of became this ongoing thing like in yes. Asian Empires there's Ridback Mountain and mm -hmm. they kind of just let us get away with it so it they was did for a long time that. yeah they put up with us yeah oh there's a 
One of the buildings in Falling Market, I think, is rid whatever. There's a lot of ridbacks randomly. There is. It's like an Easter egg for people. Yeah, I think attention. in uh, Fleet Dice, isn't it Ridback Canning Company? Yeah, 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 100%. <laughs> it's in Ridback Bay. So exactly. for all five people that ever noticed, yeah. that was for you. <laughs> Morocco, not even with a bullet. It's one of my favorite games we've ever designed. Still, it's. Yeah. I think Ben said it best. It's it's our love letter to those kind of late '90s Kinesias that we sort of cut our teeth on as gamers with you know things like Through the Desert and you know Tigers and Euphrates, which is still one of my favorites, and Samurai. So Morocco is our you know sort of loosely themed abstract love letter to those to those great games that we still play today. Yeah, as much as I love Floating Market, and I do way more than Matt. Yeah, it's not my favorite. I, I do love it, actually. And Eggs and Empires opened a lot of doors for us. It did. It, it got us a lot of places and uh, a, a lot of good sales, a lot of good plays, a lot of good yep. ratings. A lot of really fun plays at conventions, actually. Yeah, 100%. Of all the times we did, like, play with the designer at conventions, Eggs and Empires, it was some of the most fun times we yep. ever had was yep. playing that game. But I got to agree with Matt. I think out of the non-fleet universe... Morocco is my favorite. It's that, I. It's not an insult to call it a dry solace. You know, no, sixty minutes exactly ago to me is. that's a compliment because yep. those are seriously my favorite games. Yep. Get it on the table. You can literally put it out, explain it, and play in about sixty minutes. And it's got a lot of cleverness to it. A lot of cool interactions with the way you get resources mm -hmm. and play them on the board. And it's got a lot of chain reacting. That I'll be honest. Frankly, I don't think I got enough credit for the mm -hmm. chain reacting that it can do and the cascading. Probably, that happens. Yeah, because I think it, it, you got to see it. Because it's dry, always, too. Yeah. I mean, the theme. Yep. We love the theme. The art was great. Adam McIver did a great mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. on it. But it wasn't one of those themes that like really grabbed people and expanded the audience. It was, just, it was beautifully done, but yep. it was just kind of there. And it, you know. Yeah, but we love Morocco. Favorite game. Look it up if you haven't found it yet. If you, can, you can get a copy, I promise. Yeah. Though, you know, though, real quick, Floating Market is my most played game. Like as far as right on. published, because Emma likes it, my my older daughter. Yeah, and, and you that's know, the target it's an Easy audience. one to teach, like you know, it, yes. family functions. For, it's beautiful because the reality is you just you roll a pile of dice and stuff happens. Yeah. So I'm gonna like, look, just put your stuff out there. I'll pay, I'll DM it for you, yeah. and somebody's gonna roll some dice, and we're gonna tell you what happens. Floating market was kind of fun because I was at a garage sale way back in the day, mm -hmm. and I got like the nerd dice, yep. you know, the D10, yep. the yep. D20, whatever. Um, someone was selling them for like a quarter, so I picked up a bag of them. Like, I'm not a role player, so I didn't have those at right, home all exactly. the time. Yep. Um, I wish I was a role player. We just kind of didn't, kind of missed it growing we up, did. frankly. Yep. So I never had all those dice around, the polyhedrals, you know, right. we call them. No, so that's, I, that's true. I got that bag at the garage sale. I'm like, man, we're, we're going to do something <laughs> with these. Let's make a Euro gambling game, basically. Yes. Texas dice turn into Yeah, so like you're kind of gambling. You roll like 20-some dice, and you're kind of gambling on what the result will be. And it's mm -hmm. a good family experience. It is. And actually, it's got my favorite. Uh, is it the start player where you um, wrote in? No, you wrote in oh. saying, "Hey, there's like 25 sweet dice in the box. Just figure it out." Maybe I don't know if that made the production copy. Yeah. Though. That was what you had originally put it for is. the start player rule. I always like that one. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I don't remember made it either. All right, but to answer the question, Morocco. Go buy that one. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah. Promise. Designer Vitalis Serta has a few games in the works that you might have heard about. One of these games is Weather Machine, in which your scientists working with Professor Lativ, the inventor of the weather machine, at Lighting Technologies. Using his new invention, you alter the weather to benefit various regions, such as countrysides, sporting events, energy fields, and resorts. But Professor Lativ's prototype has a glitch. After analyzing the data, you discover that every time an experiment is completed, the weather changes in another part of the world, the butterfly effect. This changes global climate variability and increases the risk of extreme climate events around the world. Fixing this will be a challenge, but fortunately, the company has secured a subsidy from the government to help pay for your work. You must research each of three technical areas and build a new prototype machine. To manage all this, you'll need to acquire bots and chemicals, and that means hiring a source company to supply these and keep production moving forward. You'll also have to manage this under pressure of a small time window as the company expects its scientists to work efficiently. There's not much time before the global weather events reach extremes. Who will win the race and save the planet? We'll have more info on this weather machine to share later this year. In 
eggs and empires, you're an empire sending out adventurers to try to gain the dragon eggs that are worth points and avoiding the ones that explode and are minus points. Each of the empires will have their own deck of cards and they all have identical adventurers to each other. Each turn, there'll be some dragon eggs up for grabs. Then, players simultaneously choose one card to secretly play from the three that are in their hand to choose from from their own deck. Then all cards are revealed, and the card with the highest number gets to select the egg they want. In this case, they'll take the one that's positive points, placing it face down in their own scoring pile. Then the next highest, in this case, is forced to take this last egg, which is worth negative points. They place this in their score pile. Then different abilities might trigger from the cards. For example, the courier did take an egg, so they can take that egg card and give it to any other player, so they'll take that minus two and maybe give it to this player because they got the better egg. Or like the scout gets to secretly look at this card, no one else gets to see it, and they'll place it face down for next turn. They'll know what this is, but other players will not. And there's other abilities, like the Dark Priestess, if there's more than one, they cancel each other out and don't collect any eggs. Or the Blacksmith gaining four points at the end of the round if they did not collect an egg. Or the Mage not collecting face-up exploding eggs, they take a random one from the top, and it still might be exploding. Or the priest being able to discard an egg from their collected egg cards if they collect one. Or the shepherd who always gets to collect just before the blacksmith. And some cards like the strongest and the weakest don't have any abilities. As a new set of eggs comes out, you get to draw a single card, so you back up to three. So the cards you don't play this round, you're trying to find the right time to play them. At the end of nine turns, every player will have one card left that ends the round. Everyone tracks all the points that they've gotten for that round, and you start over and play two more successive rounds. And whoever has the most points at the end of those three rounds is the winner. Eggs and Empires is for two to six players, for ages eight and up, and plays in 20 to 30 minutes, and is available now. Click the link below to be brought right to the product page. Alma is tired. It's been a long day of chasing her grandchildren, and she needs a break. Alma has been around for a long time, and she has a few tricks up her sleeve. With the promise of her famous fruit salad, Alma sends her grandchildren down to the Damnion Sadiak floating market to collect fruit and to get out of her hair. Collecting different fruit is no easy task. As the fruit boats, full of mango, banana, papaya, guava, grapefruit, rambutan, and the famous star fruit, are constantly shifting around the Klong Damnion Sadiak Canal of Thailand. In Floating Market, the players are Ama's eager grandchildren, competing to be the first to collect five different types of fruit for Ama and get the first bowl of fruit salad. Today, we're giving away one copy of Floating Market. To enter, all you have to do is be a subscriber of our channel and then make a comment. And if you aren't yet a subscriber, you can click to subscribe below. Want a subscriber? For your comment for today's giveaway, let us know what your favorite fruit dish is. Now you have one week from when this video was launched to enter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's Eagle Griffin Games vlog. You can click the playlist link below to see all the past vlogs, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.